What's up guys? Welcome back to another video here on the Gentry and Sons YouTube channel. So guys, we want a truck, a freaking glider. It's a 2014 Freightliner, um, what, Columbia? Yeah, Columbia. Columbia. Yep. So my wife just got me an airplane ticket. Um, we may have got scammed. We <laughs> hope we want a Freightliner Columbia. Right. She thinks that we want an RC truck. <laughs> and uh, so yesterday we was at the bank wiring the money for it you got to wire the money before they'll let you come even see the truck um we wired the money and then what was it like 10 minutes later the my email starts sending me an email or my phone's like hey are you trying to log into your youtube gmail. yeah gmail yeah. yeah and so we got a two-way verification signed up on our youtube channel so if anybody tries to sign into our YouTube YouTube account, then you know that you gotta I have to approve it or she has to approve it before it can happen. So thank God she stopped it because we'd probably not even be talking right now if she didn't. <laughs> and uh but anyways, they called, they said they got the money, or you got an email, I guess, last night. Is that when you ordered the ticket? Yes, yeah. As soon as I got the email saying that they got the money, and then I got you a plane ticket. So we're getting ready to fly out to Wisconsin. Uh, my buddy Steve from FSC Trucking, which he has a Peterbilt cab over that he works every single day. I'm going to put a link down below to his YouTube channel. He's picking me up at the motel in the morning. So um, I got to fly out today at 5 p.m., 6 p.m. And uh, I'm going to get the motel at midnight. So hopefully tomorrow, guys, at this time, we will have a 2014 Freightliner Columbia Glider. These things are going for like stupid money right now. Like I this I couldn't believe it when we did the auction. Um, nobody bid against me. That's why I feel like I don't know what we're getting into because that thing should have had a bunch of bidders. It should have at least went for sixty, seventy thousand dollars, and we we ended up buying it for I think everything out the door forty thousand dollars. That's auction fees, the whole nine yards. So if we get there and the truck's in rough shape. I could probably still flip it and make our money back. Hopefully though, we get a nice truck and uh, I'm gonna be headed home with it from Wisconsin. But anyways, we're gonna get on the road. I gotta get to the airport and I will see you guys in the morning. Steve made it. He's finally here. What's up? Um, got a good night's sleep. Uh, everything's going good so far. So the plan today is we're gonna go get the truck and hopefully get it to his shop. And then we're going to go through it, make sure I'm going to have a good, safe trip home to Tennessee, and uh, hopefully well, there's actually a truck there. We actually... <laughs> well, I we'll ain't seen it yet. So. We'll get it. We'll get it to my shop one way or the other. Orwell is sitting at the shop with an empty trailer, so worst case, I got the horsepower to get it at we'll, least we'll somewhere we can it. repair it, <laughs> or we can get it back to Tennessee <laughs> if we have to. We'll do it. All right, guys. So we're going to get over here. And uh, see what we bought. God, I hope it's a nice truck. I hope there's even a truck there. Maybe I bought a fake truck. <laughs> no, they probably have it parked over by the test track. You see right off the highway, there's a bunch of them that look similar to it. Yeah. That's where they have that slick track where they wet the water, where they wet the track down with water and it's Teflon coated. That's where the police learn how to drift and slide. And they oh, actually, really? they, they do that with the trucks too. Well, they, now he did tell me that they had some more trucks, but I have to, you know, I plan on buying some more trucks when I got up here. But since it's government, it has to go through auctions or something. And I just so happened to wake up and this thing be a notification on my phone. It worked out good. It was like fate brought it to me. So, Well, where you got that truck, that's Fox Valley Tech. That's where new drivers get their CDL. So it's old CDL school over there and all. And they're one of the only ones I know of where they actually, like, like I said, they have that track you see right off the highway where they'll slick it down and they'll have you actually in a bad weather condition to learn how to drive it's oh he told me ones. that they were meticulous about maintenance and they had a really nice facility and well let's go check it out guys oh dude this place is nice there's that area where they wet the sprinklers and stuff oh that's wet right now huh oh yeah i wonder if there's any there he is right there oh where's my baby at i'm excited to see it dude this place is sweet here's on the auction this sleeper cab here uh, are all these in auction? No, this one here we were looking at buying, but we're not going to buy. Right. Um, so the red one is the one you bid on from one. Oh, wow. It looks a lot better than I thought it was going to, yeah, actually. A lot of our guys are mad we're getting rid of it because they like it. You know. Oh, you put new steers on it for me. Yeah, they're newer. 
Oh, so this right here is the unit. Yeah, this is the unit. Other than just needing some paint, yeah. I mean, it looks pretty dang good. Oh yeah. Well, this definitely makes me feel good seeing it now. It won't take much to spiff this thing up. The tri pack run? Not sure. We haven't, <laughs> we haven't run it in forever. That's so. what I was excited about. I ain't got so no hours. We, <laughs> so what we've been doing now with the newer trucks is we actually put um, air ride seats in the back of our truck. Yep. In the sleepers. Yep. So now this one has just a standard, like a bus seat type thing. Yep. Um, but then all the newer trucks were putting um, two uh, air ride seats in it. That's nice. So is so did y'all just take the mattress out of it or is it yeah mattress and the bunks and then the, the cabinets okay so there's nothing back here then where's the dome oh there it is okay so she's naked so we'll have to put some uh I don't know. Maybe I like. I kind of like it without the cabinets. Maybe do a little bit of an. I'll be honest with you. When I had my uh, classic, yeah, I didn't ever use my cabinets. I. It sounds dumb, but like for me, I only go in and out. Like I'll yeah. go from Wisconsin out and in back. Yeah. I just live out of my bag, and my laundry bag is my first. Uh, my first dirty T-shirt. I just start filling my dirty T-shirt with the dirty clothes. So I never use the cabinet. All I need is a bed. So I've never with uh with the guys i it, i've got a bunch of these trucks sitting around so it wouldn't be nothing to, even if they wanted to do the cat what about the tri-pack well so far it's not so bad yeah, other than this one's not what they call student ties right the students tear it apart and they <laughs> put it back together so <laughs> well the fact that it's a glider is what i was after everything um, else you could fix yeah i mean it's a it's a true legal glider so that for me that's where that's what i bought and the 12.7 i like the 12.7 so so it's uh let's pop the hood on it and check it out so that 06 right there i'm gonna try to bid on that one as well and then the, i don't you know if take you want... right oh <laughs> yeah okay. I don't that know thing's that thing's sharp. I can take it for a ride. Take it on the counter. It's is it so is that one a 14 liter, I'm assuming? Uh, I believe it's the same as this one. We oh. did change it from a Meritor transmission to an Eaton transmission because yep. it had Meritor electric shift and we kept having problems with it. And we had a transmission here, we just swapped it in. So Well, I love these trucks, so you see how good a shape this one's in? This one's got nice rubber on it too. So this one was repainted. Yeah, it looks I good. I'll say seven years ago ish, six years. Yeah, it's a 14 liter. Got the big motor in it. Again, they're mad we're getting rid of this one too, but we're trying to keep our fleet updated. updated. This baby right here. I bet you this would be the one. I bet you this one would go for more than that one. Probably. I didn't have nobody bid on me against that one. No. I was like, where is everybody at? What's the deal here? I know she's got aluminum inside, steel outside. That's backwards. Yeah, that's kind of weird. When I get home, it's going to have aluminum all sides. Like, nope. <laughs> so I could hit, I have my guy hit it from here back and repaint it on the frame because it looks good from there forward. What are you doing with the trucks then? Driving yourself then? Or? Yeah, we've got, we haul boats and, uh, um, you know, I get them, fix them up, haul boats with them, and then after I get, you know, a million miles on them, I cycle them out. And sometimes we rebuild them and then sometimes we, yeah, you got new tank straps because uh, we went out one day and the tank's laying on the ground. Yep. So we. That's a very common thing yeah, with these trucks. They're rusting out. <laughs> there she is, 12.7 Detroit. 
So I guess you guys fight rust a lot up here, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know that it won't buff out. Because it don't look like it's clear. I mean, it, I think it'll buff out. On my shop, um, there was a body shop there, and then there, um, there was some kind of no fed building before the current had yeah, It looks good, yeah. But now we're moving somewhere up towards Seymour now. The shop, anyway. Everywhere, everywhere along good steers. Way, real estate's real expensive down there, like Florida. Crazy. Well, it's everything you told me it is. Yeah, it's, it's a good truck. I really think it'll buff out. It really isn't that bad. We could swap those wheels and tires out if you want to, real quick. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is the one y'all are looking at? We were. Uh, we're not going to be buying that one. This one here is going on the auction? It's on it right now. And just so you know, is it this one or that one? It's ending today. It might be this one. Just yeah, it's this one. Guy. Yeah, because that one just, that yeah. So I seen that one after I won this one. Um, that one had closed out at the same time. I was like, man, I didn't even see that one until. Um, yeah, so it's back on now. Yeah, this one's got just your regular D13 in her. This one's an 06 as well. She runs really good, though. That's a clean truck. Mm -hmm. Tim speed. One thing I can say about a Volvo is they're comfortable. Yeah. Dude, I would have never imagined there's that much room to work on that thing. No, I'm surprised at that also. Wow. So this one's good to go though? Oh yeah. Good tires. Dang, I like that rubber. I'll have to get on there and check it. What's, do you know what this one's listed at? 25, that one's at 24. Okay. Well, I'd definitely probably be bidding on that one. The paint looks awesome on it. Sure. All right, guys, so this is Rob. He's the director here. Um, I guess he's the main man. <laughs> So, one of many i'm a spoke in the wheel so you want to tell them about the school and yeah just uh so what we've seen so far i really like it it really is a nice facility yeah so. i appreciate it we um cdl training right uh yep. different couple different facets we contract with carriers and do specific customized training yeah and then we also have our technical diploma and certificate programs as well so they vary in length from, from two weeks to four weeks to eight weeks and we have a 10-week evening program so quite a variation of different types of training programs. So this is true, actually good training though, is what I like about it. Good training. Is, uh, yeah. It's not one of the schools where you just try to push them through and... No, we, um, of course, with the entry level driver training requirements, ELDT. Yep. Um, we gotta follow those, but then we also have the Fox Valley Tech Standard, right? And we don't want any of our, our students to leave here without the uh, confidence and the skill set for them to be successful. Right. And then we owe it to the, the general motoring public, you know, to turn out a good, safe driver, right? So uh, we have high standards here. Well, I've seen that you have like every different kind of trucks. Yeah, um, so is that why, so you train them like, so if they're gonna be a day cab driver? We uh, try to give them a variety. It depends if they don't know, you know, a specific company that they're gonna go to work for. Right. We try to give them a variety while they're here so they can get a little flavor for that and maybe make a better choice. Uh, so we have lots of different opportunities, but we do, we customize. If a customer comes in and says, hey, it's, a, it's an automatic day cab, this is what we run, this is yeah. the type of training that we're, we're asking you to customize to, uh, we can do that, right? And so it, it goes from one spectrum, it's class B, class A, different types of trailers. We have uh, egg trailers and flatbeds and tankers and van trailers, and so we have a wide variety of wow. different types of equipment. That's pretty Train awesome, specific. actually. That's totally different than the school I went to. <laughs> Mine was in a gravel parking lot, and um, you know, it was like, bam, you can drive here, go get your license. Well, I, you know, the days we started in 1967, so we've evolved over the years, and you know, we started out with that gravel parking lot. All right. You know? uh, a couple trucks, and, and here we are. We we have about uh, 74 units and about 50 trailers. Um, so wow. Good size fleet. 
That is awesome. We're very fortunate. Well, I can see your maintenance is good. I've seen the shop. That shop is awesome. They do a good job. We're I'll, very fortunate. A lot of programs don't have a diesel program to, right. to support their truck driving. Yep. And uh, we're very fortunate to have that. Well, I'll tell you what, what really helped me with when I started, and a lot of people ask me this, is the fact that I knew trucks. Like, I went through, you know, I knew what air brakes were. Instead of just reading it in a book, you know, I actually had the hands-on experience. So, and not many schools can give you that, honestly, so. The, the learning objects that we have, the, the brake boards, the component, uh, Boards, the learning objects that we have here at the college are phenomenal. So to your point, it's I got to touch it, I got to see it. Yep. You know, we can read the book, and then we do that in classroom. Here's what we're going to talk about. Here's we're going to show it to you. Now we're going to go apply it, right? And then right. we're going to evaluate you on it. So uh, lots of great skills uh, sets that we can we can meet. You know, the students depending upon where they are, what their goals are. A lot of tools here. To and that is, so I didn't even know about this place, and then. <laughs> Um, I was bidding on that truck and I got to looking up Fox Valley and I was like, holy crap, this place is like... You know, we're right on the interstate and, and I can't tell you the amount of people that say I, I didn't even know you existed, you know? It's like the best kept secret, but we've trained thousands and thousands of people over the years, right. as you can imagine. And one of the other diamonds here that we have is our skid pad, the evasive maneuvers. Yeah, so, I, that's what he was telling me yeah. about. So. You're one of the only ones that I know of that do that too. Yeah. There's, uh, realistically, there's, there's just a handful of five right. or less in the United States right now that are active. A lot of programs have gone to simulation for evasive maneuvers and we're very fortunate to still have the hands-on that's something i've that... seen many times the trucks and or the squad cars running on that on that what is it what do you do like teflon coated or just it's the seal you know, coating just, just smooth uh, just smooth it out and then wet it yeah it's the seal coating that they apply on there and then when it gets wet it gets slippery yes yeah, so they actually show guys what it's like to actually slide in a truck yeah. and how to recover on an actual in it's, an actual real world event right. rather than you know the theory of books and how to do it i can't tell you how many students have come back and say you know what that skid pad probably saved my life yeah. i was in a situation and i recalled what i learned on there focus you know and um it's it's confident it saved lives well i'll tell you one thing that so the way i learned is my dad reaching up and grabbing the trailer brakes in a snowstorm <laughs> right. and yeah. Uh, yeah. and uh, you know we were empty but he's like you got to learn it, Figure it out. and trailers beside me you know and and i had to react and after doing that so many times and the truck sliding around so he actually <clears throat> forced me to learn that way you know yeah. it's we'd be out i mean yeah we'd be on the interstate but you know like in the middle of nowhere um and he you know and i'll be honest with you if you haven't ever slid a truck around you need to yeah it's very fortunate you had that experience a lot of people don't right. you hear about that hey i went to a parking lot a big parking lot and and uh we're messing around with the car or something you know yeah. just to kind of get the feel for it but very fortunate you have tractor yeah. trailer components we have bobtail components uh, well see the thing about learning in a truck if you know what it's going to do they're actually pretty easy to recover if uh yeah it, but a lot of people overreact and get too crazy with it and you know, it, it's hard to jackknife a truck if you if you know how to pull it out of. Right. So, yeah. and Speed, I learned. Following distance, I mean, those are things that they learn out there. And if we can control that, we're going to control incidents and accidents. Right. Well, man, I really appreciate you guys selling me the truck for one and two, giving us time to tell us about your facility. Um, so, guys, you got, all you guys on the YouTube channel, uh, this is a Tim approved school for sure. And they definitely got Tim approved trucks. So, um, and I was, man, I, you got a lot of cool trucks here. Yeah, well, we appreciate that. Thank you very much. And if anybody has any questions, please give us a call. Rob Banky, Fox Valley Tech Truck Driving Program. Be happy yep. to help you out. Yep, so guys, we'll put their information down in the description and the comments and uh, how to get a hold of you and all that stuff. And hopefully uh, we get some new students here because we, we got a lot of fresh people on the channel that want to start truck driving. And this is where you start. You can, so what's the... Can you guys actually set them up with the truck driving or do you just do the school and then they find their own? Well, we have connections with the industry. Okay. Right? And yeah. um, although we don't make guarantees, we have a lot of partnerships and relationships and, and yeah. suggestions. When they're here with us, they're talking with us, the staff, telling us what they're thinking. You know, is it local? Is it regional? What is it? What type of equipment? And a lot of the staff with the years of experience, we can, we can really help guide that. Right. Uh, so there are resources here to make those connections also. So it's... So it's a it's really a win-win i mean if you come in here knowing nothing about the trucking industry i mean let's we we, we see it right, right. Uh, you can walk out of here qualified and making a really good career salary 
earning, right, driving truck coming from Fox Valley Tech. Now, there's a lot of great schools across the nation. A lot of great schools. We're just blessed to uh, be one of them. Well, I'll tell you what, this is, uh, uh, you have definitely convinced me, I'll be honest with you. I would have loved to have been able to come to a place like this. Because, you know, when I went to school, it was, which I'd already been driving, you know, yeah, been on a farm most of my life. And, and so I knew all about trucks, but um, I, I got caught without a CDL. So I'd have no choice. Go to school, get your CDL, and then we'll drop it. Sure. So, uh, but I went to a school in Tennessee. And I mean, I ain't gonna say it's a bad school, but it was like push, push, push. You know, people that couldn't drive, you know, it was a push to make them just pass that test. Yeah. Yeah, and, test. you know, two weeks and just to pass that test and, and then get them out there in some company that's going to take advantage of them and then burn them out. Yeah. And, and then in six weeks, eight weeks, they're done. You yeah, know, it no, was a waste of time. Them, right? Yep. Yeah, we lost them forever because they had a bad experience. Yep. I'll give you an example. In 1998 in New Jersey, I'm not going to say the name of the school, but I went to one of the bigger ones that are still around in New Jersey. And their test was basically just get, they knew exactly what the road test would look like for the state if you went to a certain location and what the written test would be like. And they basically mirrored it. Sure. And when I actually hit the real, ro the real road in the real world, it was like, wait a minute. How do I actually, um, how do I actually shift this thing? Right. Like for real, how do I actually do yeah. it? How do you actually make a turn rather than what they taught you? It was like what they taught you was completely different from real world experience. I'm like, okay, great. I passed the test to get a CDL. Now I'm more dangerous than I was before I started. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And you had to learn a hard way. And yeah. thank God I had a good trainer with the first company, but that was the issue with, it yeah. probably still is. There's, if you live in New Jersey going to school to get a CDL. There, there are gaps between school and industry. And, and we talk to our students about that. You know, what you're doing here, what you're learning here is just a, a small glimpse of what to expect in the industry, right? And right. so we, we talk to, we got to bridge that gap. Here's what you can expect. Here's what you're going to be facing. Let's work on that while you're in school. Let's talk about that. Let's deal with it so we narrow that gap. Right. And I also like that it's kind of like a terminal here too. Yeah. So, I mean, they're gonna to get to learn how to come in, get their trailers, you know, kind of how all that works. And that's my favorite part about trucking is getting to go into new places um, yeah. where you back into a dock or where, you know, I, I always like to set up and I don't I like a challenge. So, um, yeah. well, man, I appreciate it. And thank you thank for you so much. giving me some time. That. And, yep. and um, so guys, Fox Valley here in Wisconsin, uh, I'm a I'm a believer. So awesome. <laughs> this this so place much, is awesome. Appreciate it. This was donated, and the students get to use it to you know diagnose problems. You know, right. They'll put a bug in it, and the instructor will have them diagnose it. Um, they'll run the overhead so that they can know how to adjust valves properly, mm -hmm. things like that. We have one DD8 over there. Uh, we just purchased that this last spring, and. I haven't really got a chance to work with it much yet, but it's unfortunately now they're not even going to build those engines. Yeah, no. Nope, going yeah. to Cummins and like, hey, man, that's cool. That this is. So these actually run. This these will actually run. We just got to plug in a battery, um, and run it. It can run. Um, we have to show you where our overhaul lab is here. Oh, that would be. I'm telling you right now, I'm getting really jealous over this shot. Look, the creepers are in perfect location. Jack stands. This is my dream shop right we, here. We try. <laughs> this kind is of a, a mess in here because uh, instructors getting ready for the next semester. Yep. But uh. Oh, so you actually build engines and. We have them all in carts. Oh, wow. Um, the cats are donated from um, Oshkosh truck. Yep. They were in uh, military vehicles, but then they something happened to them, so they had to take them out and rebuild. Right. But yeah, we got Volvo's, DD13s, Mac. Um, as you can tell, Cummins. And a lot of these come out of trucks that are either donated because they're rollovers right. or they've been, uh, they, uh, they don't need them anymore. Man, so. this is so cool. What I like about the cats is they're, you know, cats ain't changed much. Even with the twin turbos, it's just... I am not a fan of cats. I just, in my years of working on them, I just right. never liked them. Cummins, eh. The ones I used to like are the old Series 60. I love That's those my engines. favorite motor, man. You. That that engine has my heart, and that's all yeah. I'll run. I do have a few cats, and, yeah, and they're just very very simple, and they're they, they're powerful. Yep, I do have a few cats, but you know I got them hopped up, 
and but same thing if they tear up it's so expensive to fix them um heavy yep heavy, heavy. super <laughs> heavy i'm a detroit man true to true detroit that's why i bought this truck from you guys i'm a big detroit guy so yeah we go through a lot of the after treatment stuff teach the students about all that stuff all the, how they work and then what to diagnose on them i like this setup here that's pretty cool yeah. is that what you use to do your uh yeah so they understand how the cams work yep so they'll rotate it and then they can see how okay yeah you know exhaust intake injector well it's kind of an outdated engine yeah. now because, yeah <laughs> well i still run these actually so that's pretty cool a lot of people don't understand how to build these how to set your liners and your heights and yeah. all that stuff and um those are good motors i still run those and then this automatic transmission yep we got a couple allisons here so they got to learn the valve bodies on them um what we did what they did was used to be a uh, one-year or two-year program yeah basically a one-year program then you had to just take uh, your generals to get your associate degree right. now here what they've done is they've actually broke it down to a one-year technical diploma and then they have a two-year associate degree so the associate degree guys actually get to go through the overhauls right the technical diploma guys just they get the basics of everything right. how change, to do proper pms yeah. um how to do change parts uh turbos things like, like that, that. yeah so well that's a good thing to learn because that it's hard to find a guy anymore that can do the just the normal stuff yeah. um and then you got a good overhaul guy that's that's a big plus that's too it's a big plus yeah it's been years since i've done an overhaul because i I was in the industry for five, six years, and I went and wrote technical manuals, all those vehicles that Oshkosh built. Right. I wrote the troubleshooting side for it. Well, I got kind of tired of it. I missed working on trucks. Right. So I came into that. I got into this, and I love it here. It's 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 a great school. I get to deal with students, so it's. I'll it's be nice. honest. I did not expect this when I come here this morning. I knew we were coming to uh, pick up the truck, and I asked him. I said, "Hey, can we do a video?" Because I did looked up the reviews and actually talked to a few people that went to school here and. They're like, man, that place is just, I tell you what, this is what the industry needs. If every school was like this, yeah, it would really. One student right now, his company sent them here. They're paying him to come to school here, right. and he's from Connecticut. Really? So That's awesome. Yeah, we get him from Florida, Minnesota, Illinois. I would like so. to come here and just do, see, so these new engines, like I hate these motors. <laughs> I absolutely despise these things right here. Just because it almost cost me, it did cost me my first business. I failed the first time I started a trucking company. I have no lies to tell, and it was because of that motor, and uh, which my fault too. I shouldn't have bought the thing not knowing how to work on it. So, and it was so expensive to work on, and I had one blow up, spent almost thirty-two thousand dollars rebuilding it, and then uh, yeah. and then it lasted like eighteen hundred miles. Spit two rods out. <laughs> And the guy that rebuilt it, he's a great mechanic. This dude's a killer mechanic. It just something happened. And then he, he, it was so expensive since, you know, to warranty it. He was going to warranty it. And it was so expensive, you know. I understood it because I don't know that I could build a $32,000 motor and it blow up and then me be able to make that up either. So. And you can say how many times. A lot of these engines have been apart so many times, too. Like, yeah. Everybody likes to go to the DD-15. I mean, it's a, truthfully, that's a basic engine too. But if you don't get those cams right, yeah, you're, then you're yeah, you're in a mess. So, and then, uh, you know, Max, you see those Max, Max, Volvo, same same engine, so it's yep. not a big deal. I know we've, you know, getting back into the back in the industry, having to learn the after treatment systems was was crazy. Now, that's a whole different world. There there's some a, things that are weird stuff comes up, and it's just. Yeah, it takes a, a mind that is willing to think outside the box a lot of times to work on those things. Yeah, because their troubleshooting ain't worth anything, so it's... Yeah. And then, like, on the, uh, they also have, like, a class when they go into the second year, they'll go through the transmissions, too. They'll to actually take one apart, yeah. put it back together, retime all the gears inside. Um, That's a good thing to learn. But in the first year, they'll do is they'll pull the clutches out, they'll pull the, you know, go through the uh, back half of the transmission. Yep. So then they'll put that back in, make sure it all works and stuff, so... That's pretty good. I tell you what, all this stuff I've had to learn on my own. I would have loved to have been able to go to a school like this. I didn't even know this existed, don't <laughs> I mean, I know there's technical schools out there, but this is my first experience even being one. Man, this shop is phenomenal. Yeah, this was added on in 2015. When I went through the program, that was the only shop they had at the time. Yep. Then they added this on in 2015, so it was, it was kind of a nice deal. It was a, 
I don't remember how they did it, but it cost a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> so oh yeah, this is a. Uh, oh man, I couldn't imagine what this. You got a crane and everything. That's. This is big money here. Yeah, we. But to make it in this industry with all this new stuff, you have to have a shop like this. You have to. And to get guys that want to come work for you, you know, it's, uh, I work in a gravel parking lot, my guys do, and um, <laughs> we make it work. But, you know, I don't think there's some big highly trained, college educated guy going to come work for us. I say that, and we do have quite a bit ask us to come, you know, because it's, it's, working at a dealer is a big, it's a big difference than working for an old school. Yeah, my outfit. Minor, uh, wherever I worked was like small fleets. Um, yeah. And I, I worked up in one up in Freedom. Uh, it's United Van Lines now, but it used to be called Long Vans back in the day. Yep. I worked for a company down in Nina. It was called N M Transfer, and it's a company I like. I like working there. Was, I worked second shift. Yeah. It was four tens. It was awesome. And it was the same truck. So every time a truck came in, you knew it was wrong. Right. So it, yeah. it made a big difference there. Well, that's that's so. kind of the way we work. And then we'll buy these like this. Um, usually every two or three years, I'll go in and buy some gliders. I, I don't buy them brand new. I buy them with two or 300,000 miles on them. And then we'll run them to a million. And then the really good ones, we'll keep and refresh them. Um, but, and then the other ones, we'll just cycle out. I mean, they're still good trucks. Just, uh, there's certain trucks I want to rebuild and there's certain trucks I don't. So, but it's hard to find these anymore. And I'm on the hunt right now. I'm trying to find, <laughs> trying to find two more of them. I can show you up here in this other mezzanine. We got our brake board up there. It's pretty high tech. Oh yeah, I'd like to see that. So, Holy. set up in the water, brake on it. No way! Check this out, guys. They've got a dyno. Now this is what's up right here. I'd love to have one of these. I'd probably live in the dyno room. <laughs> so this actually runs and not yeah, you can fire it up if you like. Oh, that'd be awesome, yeah. Do power tests and all that? Yeah, we can do all your different uh, service routines. We can do idle speed bound, throttle, cylinder cutout. So we can run all that kind of stuff on the, on the schools. Man, that is so cool. This is really. Oh, you've got the big TV well, up there. You gotta, when you're teaching something, you can actually point it out up here. Estimated boost pressure. And so I don't teach them like even how to read a computer and all that. Yep. Like a so then, yeah, this is like an adapt so you're watching the EPF system so it's a recap. Yeah. So you can tell what the temperatures are. You can teach them this is yeah. what the temperatures you're looking for. These are all pressures. Um when a few of those are actually kicks in and how much it's gonna kick in and how much food's going in. So they know what to look for when they're doing these. That is awesome. You guys have got it going on, I will say that. That is the coolest. I want one of those. <laughs> I, will, I definitely want one of those. Yeah, they do like high drop classes, so they'll do a steering suspension so they know how to test steering gears and yep. make sure everything that's supposed to work out works out. With all our trucks backing so often, we, hey, we're getting into uh, some of the temperature, we're getting up over 300 degrees because of all the right. backing, steering and all. So we end up having to put coolers on everything. Uh, 
and I could talk to you all day. So this is our uh, break area. Wow. This is state of the art here, buddy. So they learn about compressors. Compressors, the air dryers. We actually have mock-ups for uh, the disc brakes and in drum. So look them up here, they'll actually set up the chambers, the slack adjusters, they'll learn all that, how to do it all properly. And then they'll also do the disc brakes. Fundamentals to learn here on this board. Clear it up. So what's nice is you can actually run these. Oh, shoot. And when I hit the throttle. Now if I put it, push the brake real hard, you'll actually put it in ABS. That right there is just the coolest. Training like this, I didn't even know it existed. I just did this all by myself, you know, just learned over the years. Jeez, I would've gave anything. I would've given anything to learn like this. This is cool, man. You guys definitely got it going on. You got the glad hands hooked up, the everything. So you teach them how to adjust the brakes on this and all that too? Um, we mainly use this for the fundamentals of the braking system. Yep. And then when they go over here on the props, then we'll set them up with how to properly adjust them, how to make sure they're in the right, their uh, proper brake stroke and all that. So it's just a matter of the work from one to the next and just kind of baby step it out right. and then we'll put them on trucks and let them do it on trucks. This is cool. I didn't even notice it's here. Dude, they got an engine room and everything, the dyno. I saw a little bit of the engine stance down there. Yeah. We were talking about where, or if Matt didn't go where he went, um, he was probably going to wind up coming here to do diesel mechanics or something. I would like to come here. I mean, That's what I'm saying. I would love to come here. You guys want to give me a scholarship? <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, we'll get a million views. Uh, <laughs> I'm coming to this school. <laughs> I just like to relearn everything again. Not just the driving aspect, but working on them aspect. There's a cutoff. I mean, dude, they teach everything here. They got an engine room where they rebuild. They got the dyno down there, transmissions. Well, the here's brake. Really cool. I'll show you that. We have a drum here. We, we one of our trucks we bought. We had what less than six months. Yeah, brand new. Brand new. And this is the drum that was on the truck. Oh. We cracked it and broke the front plate of it off. Yeah. Yikes. Our, uh, one of our students found it. He was trying to do the brake stroke and he had a five and a half inch brake stroke. And when I looked at it, that's what I found was that. So. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, I've had one bust before, but not like that. Just crack, you know. Disc brakes. So I'm actually thinking about switching some of my trucks over to disc brakes. They're nice. They're nice. You're gonna probably get a lot more wear. Stopping distance is shorter. Yep. So it's gonna be a lot. Everybody, nicer. there's a guy the other day said it's like having a Ferrari. You know, once you got disc brakes, it's like. Yeah, your brake pads will last a lot longer. Easy to change. Oh, oh yeah, easy. Very it's just easy. a matter of pull this pin here. Pull the pin. Pull the plate off. Back, yeah, back it off, it off a little, little bit. Pull the shoes. Man, I tell you what, I come here to buy a truck and I even really cared about looking at my new truck. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't expect that, but yeah, you just pull these straight out. No crap. And you adjust them, you put them in, three clicks. That's pretty much industry standard on new equipment now, ain't it? Yeah. Well, we got old equipment. <laughs> Our crap's old. It pays the bills, however, that's a lot easier to change a pen. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Especially on that other, that other peep I got with the inboard brakes. Mm -hmm. By the way, that drama is solved now. That truck's mine again. Is it? Oh, yeah. Good deal. <clears throat> Man, this place is just 
freaking awesome. Funny when I started work, when I came to school here, this was a storage area. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> when I started working here, it, yeah, this changed to a classroom. It was kind of neat to see the change. So. I'll tell you. Do y'all keep pretty full classes? Um, it's been slow for a little while, but it's starting to pick up more now. I, I, yeah, everybody's starting to go back to work now. So. Man, this guys, you've got to come check this place out. Give them a call. I definitely approve of this place. I would have gave anything to be able to learn stuff like this. You know, we had to learn hands-on. You know, we started trucking, and when something broke, we had to learn how to fix it. This place here is like, I mean, look at that. That's stuff we deal with all the time right here. This is old school brakes like what we run, which, I mean, they're still same brakes as today, but this is an older setup. Um, like what you'd see on one of my trucks, like my Peterbilt. This is the same braking system that's on my Peterbilt. Look, it's even got a Peterbilt pedal in it. So, definitely, uh, I definitely approve. So guys, check this place out and uh, give them a call. If you're wanting to get into the industry, I think this is a good place to start. I don't know how the funding and all that stuff goes, but I'm assuming since it's like this, it's probably good, you know, they probably got a good program. So, um, but anyways, we're gonna go check out our truck now, get it fired up. We're gonna take it over to Steve's and uh, go through the thing thing, make sure she's good to go, which I'm assuming it is, but still wanna make sure it's good to go. All right, guys, she's full of oil. Let's see if she's gonna fire up. Is it all right to start it in here? Or yeah. Okay. Here it goes. All right, here we go, first start. You filming, bro? Hell yeah. Good sounding motor. Heck yeah, boys. I'm excited now. That's a good, clean sounding motor. That's what it'll look like without the fairings out there. I'm gonna try to buy this one too. This is a pretty nice truck here. It's low mileage as well. Yeah, this truck's sharp. I like my auctions. All right, let's back this baby out. Guys, I'm trying to quit vaping. I know everybody gets on my case about it. 
I'm not perfect. Oh, 300,000 miles. Look at that. Oh, it's got fuel in it. 300,000 miles. That is so awesome. This is an exciting day. I'm just backing it out. Well, it feels good. We got air conditioner. We got to make sure we got air conditioner. I can already tell this thing's gonna be governed. All right, come on, air conditioner. Here we go. Man, this thing actually runs pretty good. It's got a nice cold air conditioner on it, power windows, power mirrors. When we get done with this thing, it's gonna be a sharp truck too. So I don't really show the fleet stuff a whole lot, but this is gonna be one of the ones that I show you how we buy them, how we fix them up, what we do to them, all that. So this thing will be, it'll look like a whole different truck before it goes on the road. And it's, uh, we these things we have to do pretty quick. So it'll be a main priority when I get back. We're putting it on the road pretty quickly. Transmission shift's good. I don't know if the jakes work, which they might have them unhooked because of being a school truck. So they got them unhooked or turned off. Too. 
man that's not good guys we're stuck in the slow lane all the way to the house and i am not a 65 mile per hour driver so maybe i can take it by freight liner and get them to bump it up for me real quick or find somebody up here in wisconsin that can uh, do it Holy moly, there's the famous Orwell. The Orwell. God, I love that truck. First time we get to see it in person. <laughs> Dang, I just noticed that thing. All right, guys, here she is, the famous Orwell, the worldwide known Peterbilt. What is it, 362? 362. You know how I know that? Because I watch your video. <laughs> <laughs> your I intro. Used to be bad at that. I, I love your intro. I love your intro. Guys, this is one of my favorite cab overs right here. Just the fact that it runs every day. I mean, he runs the crap out of this thing. And, uh, Everybody aggravates him about the wheels. <laughs> the other ones on the other side. Yes. Scott, you don't run good years and Michelin's on the back and not be able to afford wheels. He just likes his wheels. <laughs> Orwell likes his wheels. And it's not priority. Tires are. Fact, sad fact is Michelin's don't make the size anymore because of labor problems. Yep. They will eventually. So I was able to get them in good years. I prefer to Michelin's, but to be, to be honest, the reason I like Michelin's is you can run them Yep. You can have an older truck that doesn't have the absolute perfect alignment, and the tires will wear down decent. Man, I love so, these 60 and 2s. These are the best tires ever. They're just so expensive now. At this point, though, this rim generates so much heat, so much comments. Yep. I, I, that'll probably be the last thing I do. Matt thinks I should put all aluminum in here and then take a black wrap and wrap that just to just to get the hate and discontent going. <laughs> so, guys, I did give him a set of wheels. Uh, we just hadn't been able to get together and him you pick them up. Now I do have to get to match with those wheels though. I do gotta get different studs because these are these are shorter studs because yep. the steel is my I there. think I probably even have the studs laying around. Yes, yeah, so but I, I, I don't know that I'd like Orwell with all aluminum. I've got so used to the to the rusty <laughs> wheel and this one. I mean I don't think I don't, I think I like it. But you're that's, that's you're, a problem when a truck starts becoming iconic and you're used to seeing it a certain way. Yep. You don't really wanna change anything anymore. Man, this thing it, video don't do it justice this thing is awesome this truck is just and the fact that you run this thing just blows my mind i love it i love that you're doing it you know because i mean there's only a few of us out there that even cares to run these things anymore well to me i thought this was all necessity this i thought it was all necessity just to get around i don't know how anybody can afford a fancy exhaust system and when mm. it breaks down you're down for months and months on end waiting on parts yep how do you make big truck payments on e on equipment that sits at the shop more than it runs right i mean it's also easy to work on so if you do your own work this is not hard it's heavy but it's not hard right oh yeah like them trucks we we're looking at earlier i was in a like i mean i'm sure i could work on it but you gotta have fancy computers. You gotta have, you know, that's the closest this thing. This designed on teaching you how to work on Yeah, that, that truck right there is the closest thing I wanna deal with to having a computer. And, you know, it's a simple Detroit 60 series. And that's a proven great engine right there. Just like what's in Norwell. Oh yeah. This is a proven great truck. Dude, the sleeper is so much bigger than I thought. Full, it's a full size bed in there. It's a couple inches shorter than a standard full size. Yep. Um, I actually ordered this one custom from Big Rig Mattress, so they made it exact to the size it's of the sleeper hole. I don't know how I'm ever going to get it out, though, because the doors are only so big. Right. When you get them, you just roll them in there. They're like a big tube, yep. but you have yeah. to make them make sure. But once they're right unrolled, cut they're... The tape, cut the tape, and it, blam! They just open right, almost throws you out of the truck. So, guys, videos don't do Orwell any justice. This truck is really nice, actually. It does no justice for this truck. Dude, even you like, I like how you got your lights and stuff, and the, it's the little things I notice. Yeah, that flat bumper added added the character to it. It did, it did, and the lights are in the perfect position. I like how you put the fog lights back on it, and 
don't, don't laugh it might sound boozy but those lights actually came uh the inspiration came to me off of jen's mercedes because it's got the daytime running lights on yeah. the bottom where your fog lights would be yeah and i'm like that looks kind of cool and when i saw those lights i'm like that would work plus they double the strobes so it's the two things it's got the the white oh, light sure. and it'll do strobe that's cool. so like an either or right but yeah jen's mercedes is where i got the idea from and it's kind of become the icon the iconic look of this truck oh yeah this thing is just guys orel's awesome i'll just go ahead and tell you got the big tanks on it man i'd love to run this truck you ever get rid of this thing which i'm sure you never would but this truck made my channel so it'd be hard to... i'll <laughs> yeah it'd be crazy to for me to die okay if, well if, uh, my sons will let well it tell me. matt that uh I'd definitely love to have this thing one day. <laughs> Dude, this thing is sweet. New motor. How many miles is on the motor now? Um, probably in a neighborhood 150, 180,000. Yeah, you've been running the crap out of this thing. Dude, it's clean. Nice and clean. What matters is clean. That's what I like about what you do with this truck. Cause you know, it's, I have no doubt in my mind this thing would pass a DOT inspection and you ain't worried about putting all the fancy chrome pipes and the, um, but what does matter is, not, I mean, you got a nice toolbox. Um, the the tires is what really, the tires as much as the whole truck. I like that part about. <laughs> so you got to bear in mind one thing with this truck. If most people don't quite understand, and I probably ought to push this more on the channel. This whole thing was actually an accident. I didn't intend on the YouTube channel to become the trucking channel. Originally, this shop was based upon custom cars. I was trying to get custody of Matthew, so I needed to get off the road full time. So I was trying to use, at the time, my 01 Freightliner, to, which was paid off to stake the shop in building cars, and at which point I could say to the judge, hey, listen, I'm only on the road 50% of my time or less than 50% of my time. The rest I'm home, Jen was here, so I was able to be like, I could be a very involved father and get custody of my son, and it worked. But then I decided when my 01 Freightliner became one year too new, I decided, you know, let me send that down the line. I sold it and I bought this. And I didn't even intend on buying a cab over. I just wanted old enough to get around ELD. And I wanted old enough that if they hit us with speed limiters, they have a mechanical engine without an ECM that couldn't be limited. Right. Even though everybody in the industry that knows anything knows we can alter in the computer the rear end ratio. We can alter the tire size so we can make the computer think it's doing 65, even though it's doing 70. But that being, it's probably shouldn't have given that away edit that out if you'd like <laughs> so the youtube channel was an accident and then when covid hit the car shows ended we had nothing else to film i filmed the brand new startup of the, the i filmed the, the first startup of the brand new engine and then me and matt did a couple videos with it and that's what hit all of a sudden i start getting a lot of views on the truck so i decided okay well that's what's paying the bills we'll start a trucking channel instead and that's how it all started completely by accident but i was going to run this truck without youtube Right. This wasn't a YouTube thing. This was what I would do without YouTube. That's what I like about it. I and mean, that, that's who I. I am. remember I started watching. I was like, "Holy crap! Who is this guy?" And then, bam! <laughs> I just started binge watching your channel, and um, that's when I seen the transmission out. So, guys, I actually hit him up. He'd already had the transmission in it and truck going when I seen the where he broke the transmission. And I was heading to Michigan. I'm like, "Dude, I got a transmission. I'll throw it in the truck and I'll have to put it in." he's like man i already got it fixed and then that's where that's where oh, our relationship run. started so oh yeah well and yeah we fire it up let's hear it running you know we came down and i thrashed on your uh your x3 to yeah the can am which i thought you were insane for letting me do that well there's a pond right there and i know there's a, a pro r sitting in well, hey in, now <laughs> in there after glamis maybe <laughs> I'll, I'll tow it down to tennessee we'll play with it down there after glamis dude you got a perfectly good pond right there that's probably deep, huh? It is deeper than you think. <laughs> All right, we'll fire them up. Then I'll show you the other Peterbilt now. The drama with that one's over. Oh, here's the famous oil well. Dude, I've seen... I feel like I've seen this truck before. Check that out, guys. Got the manual switch in it. Heck yeah. 
There you go, guys. There's Orwell. That motor sounds really good. It's amazing. He runs his truck with no air conditioner as well. No air. Just a good old school truck. Hard working. Kind of blows my mind, actually. All right, guys. So we got to check out Orwell. We got to check out the Peterbilt, which we'll save this for a later date. This is just a cool freaking old truck right here. Man, it's just so... And then there's an old Detroit over there screaming somewhere. It's a big fork truck. Steve yeah, gets Pac-Van to... stuff there. So, uh, anyways, I got to thank Steve for being so generous and picking us up and helping me go over the truck. And he helped me video today, all kinds of stuff. So go over and check his channel out because he did get some footage from today. And uh, I guess you're probably going to put a video up. Oh, yeah, I'll put, I'll put it up. It'll be after yourself. But yeah, okay. we'll do it. But uh, so go check out FSC Speed. It was FSC, FSC Trucking. FSC Trucking now. So because it originally started out as a race shop. So, um, but anyways, guys, that's gonna finish off today's video. Thanks for watching. You gotta come back for the next video on this thing because there's a little surprise. Something we figured out about the truck. Hopefully we get it home, and you guys just have to come back and check it out and see what it is. So we'll see you on the next video.